All right, what's going on everybody? I'm Broken Games HDR and this video will be my impressions for The Last of Us Part 2. Keep in mind, this video will not have any story spoilers, but it may have what some people uh, consider gameplay spoilers because some people are very sensitive to spoilers and they consider anything uh, even gameplay mechanics that they may have not known before, they consider those to be spoilers. So if you're extremely sensitive and you don't like to learn or see anything you didn't know before and you consider those spoilers, you should probably just listen to the video rather than watch. But I can assure you there is no story spoilers in the video, right? So um, The Last of Us Part Two is a very divisive and controversial game for the story. And I can't really touch on the story much for the reason I already named. Uh, for me to really talk about the, the story and the plot and the narrative narrative and everything like that, it's, it's kind of difficult to be vague about it, but also talk, talk about the story. All I can tell you is I think the story is great. I'm enjoying the narrative, narrative. I'm enjoying the plot and it makes sense to me, right? And I will have uh, a spoiler cast. I will have times on Weapon Will podcast in the future where we can uh, delve deeper into the story, and I can I can you know give my thoughts on it and rationalize it to people and everything like that. Um, but unfortunately, I can't do it in this video. But in future episodes of Weapon Will, not this week, but maybe the week after, and whenever I get around to doing the spoiler cast. Uh, we can de delve a little bit deeper into the story, but I don't have any problem with the story that other people have and what the internet is outraged about. The reason I don't is, and this is all I'm going to say about it, is logic and context matters. And some people can't get past their emotions to see the logic and the context. That's all I'm going to say about it, but there's nothing wrong with the story that some people are implying. That's just their emotions clouding their judgment. So that's all I'm going to say about it, right? So let's move on to the gameplay and, and other aspects of the game. Um, and I'm going to touch on some things I don't like about the, uh, about, about the game. Some things that bother me, um, some gripes I have with it, right? So I've been playing for about 15 hours so far. I'm playing on Survivor, which is the hardest difficulty uh, at, at least right now in the game. There's rumors that they might release um, uh, Grounded sometime in the future, which we know was the hardest difficulty uh, in, in the original game. But I can actually say Survivor seems to match up pretty well with Grounded. They seem to have made Survi uh, Survivor Grounded in this game. So Grounded, will, if they actually release it, would be an even uh, greater difficulty at that point, right? So like I said, I've, I've been live streaming. I've live streamed for maybe a total of 15 hours uh, playing on Survivor. Uh, people say the game is like 20, around 25 hours. Um, long but you know i'm obviously it depends on the way you play the game and your pacing of the game so i don't know if i'm actually like 10 hours away from beating it i don't know how far i am from the actual ending right so the gripes i have with the game is uh first of all the frame rate right the frame rate is a stable 30 right you, i don't really notice any dips but the thing is we've been playing the last of us the original game um, at 60 frames, the remastered version for the entirety of this gen, right? So the 30 frames Last of Us on, on PS3 is kind of foreign to us, right? We don't even like that. That feels weird to even go back to. So we're very used to playing the 60 frames uh, version of, of The Last of Us. And going back to 30 frames to play it is a little bit jarring. And it affects the fluidity of the game, um, like the, the animations a little bit. And uh, also the aiming. The aiming just doesn't feel as fluid. It doesn't feel like uh, just as smooth as it does in The Last of Us Remaster. It feels a little bit jumpy and like it, it's skipping. I, I don't know exactly how to, how to describe it, but it's just one of those things that comes with a 30 frame game. Right when you slowly move your reticle across the screen, it doesn't seem like it's just seamlessly moving. It's it feels like it's stuttering it or hitching a little bit. So that's that's one of my issues with the game. Also, it seems like the aim acceleration is a little bit off. Right, aim acceleration is is just how fast your once you when you moving the reticle, how fast the reticle starts moving at top speed. 
And in The Last of Us Part 2, it feels like it just goes from slow to fast very quickly. And it's not like that in the first game. And that could once again have, have to do with the frame rate. So I feel, and, and, the la and this game has so much customization, so much options and, and accessibility options, which it deserves all the, the praise in the world for, and, and you can customize your, your X and Y sensitivity and all that stuff, but you can't customize like dead zones and um, aim acceleration, which I feel like they should have allowed you to do. I mean, it has 60 plus options um, in, in different categories. I, I feel like you should definitely be able to uh, customize like the, the dead zones and the um, and the aim acceleration to refine your, your aim a bit. So that's, um, uh, that's the, an issue I've had a little bit with uh with the aiming it just, just doesn't feel as fluid the next issue i have with the game is is the level design so let me explain right now it's been a long it, it's been debated a while if last of us is a stealth game some people say no some people say yes i i do think uh on a, on a spectrum last of us is leaning towards being a uh a, a stealth game um depending on the depending on the difficulty you play as i think it is kind of a stealth game overall but it really just depends on the uh on the difficulty you play as right so listen mode is a huge and main it's a main mechanic in the game right it's a, it allows you to see through walls they claim you know the it's based on the fact that you're listening and that allows you to see like a soft glow uh um through walls and know where enemies are located now i'm against listen mode i never use listen mode it doesn't matter if it was the last of us multiplayer the last of us single player i've beaten the last of us on you know every time i beat it i never use listen mode it's it's just something i i it's just a mechanic that i just don't disagree i don't agree with and i don't think it should be in a video game it's it's wall hacking i'm maybe i'm old school maybe i'm, I'm a purist you can say what you want i don't use listen mode and yeah, that that is it's a detriment to me when I play the game. Fine, I'll deal with it. I, I'm I'm fine with dealing with that with, with that fact uh, that I'm that I'm handicapping myself. That is a detriment to me based on how the game is designed. But I, it's just something I, I'm I'm just avidly against. The issue with that is, and how it ties into uh, level design is the levels in this game are designed for you to use listen mode. And as I said, I don't use listen mode. I would have rather there be no listen mode and you design the level around actual stealth rather than design it around listen mode because it, it feels like a crutch. You're like, you, like, I'm gonna give you an example. Let's say you have an enemy that is, um, that is ahead of you and to the left. Let's say there's a room ahead of you and to the left, right? There's the way they design the level is for you th that that part right they, they would design it for you to use listen mode to see where the enemy is that's unaware of you at that point you have to use listen mode to see what they're doing in a stealth game that doesn't have a mechanic to see through the wall what they would do is put um some type of uh some type of object to the right of that room so you can go behind the object and like peek into the room and see what's inside right that's how they would design that game that game that doesn't have a mechanic to see through walls but that's not how naughty dog designs it design it so me playing the game as a as a stealth game and not having the proper level design to support it just kind of makes me feel like it's bad game design first and, and i understand that's my personal problem because i don't like to use listen mode but i don't think the level should be designed around people who use listen mode that's just how i feel i know i'm gonna get a lot of a lot of slack for that people say it's my fault it's my fault you know it's a mechanic in the game deal with it just use it cool i know that's gonna be how people feel about it i'm just telling y'all i understand i i'm putting myself at a, at a handicap and i wish the game was designed a different way that's that's all I'm saying. So that's a personal gripe. Most people, uh, most other people won't care. Most of you, you know, are fine with, you, with using listen mode. I just think you listen mode is a flawed mechanic and it doesn't belong in the game. I'm gonna move on from that. The game is more is more vertical also, which is good. You, you know, um, the original Last of Us, it was very on a kind of like a flat surface. This is very much a designed to be more of a vertical, vertical uh, game and enemies can be on uh, different levels and different platforms. So you have to look out for that um the, so the, so the verticality is good another issue i have with the game 
is the skill tree upgrades, right? I think this is a cardinal sin in video games and no developer should do this. I hate when developers create a skill tree and in order to get to the, to the skills you want to use, you have to upgrade a whole bunch of skills that you don't give a shit about. I hate that, right? So for example, uh, in The Last of Us, there's different um, skill tree tiers. And let's say let there's there's survival, there's crafting, there's stealth, there's precision, and there's explosives. Um, I think that's all of them that are in the game. That's at least all of them that I've unlocked, and you unlock them by getting these survival journals. But you get them by getting these journals in the game, right? So, for example, right, if I want to unlock the ability to increase my maximum health or uh, increase the the effect uh, the effectiveness of of a health kit or the ability to perform stealth kills faster, I have to unlock a whole bunch of shit I don't give a damn about, like like um, listen mode movement speed, or uh, what else is there? There's listen mode movement speed, there's uh, craft more, more, more smoke bombs, and I don't use smoke bombs that often, I'm not saying they're a terrible item, but they're, it's not my priority, I don't use them that often. So after, before I get to the, the upgrades I want, I have to upgrade and spend my resources on a whole bunch of useless shit that I do not use in the game. And some of you might not have a problem with that. Once again, I do. Because if this game is about choice, playing how you want, you know, whether you want to go guns blazing or go stealthily, you should give me the, the option to upgrade in the order that I want. So that's another problem I have with the game. I And I hate when most developers don't do it in that way anymore. Um, but like I said, I just have a problem with that. I don't think that skill trees should be developed in that way, or like at least design the skill tree in a way that like the categories are very, very much relatable to one another. Cause like I said, they'll have, they'll, they'll have, uh, oh, upgrade, upgrade, um, upgrade listen mode. And then the next upgrade will be, will be about faster stealth kills. One has like, it, it, it's two different categories. It's two different mechanics. Why are they in the same the same part of the skill tree? That makes that makes no sense to me personal. So those are the things that I don't like about the game because you know I always keep it real with y'all. I'm I'm overall I'm enjoying this game. I think it's great, right? But that doesn't mean it's perfect. I'm not one of those people who's gonna tell you that oh this game is perfect. I mean. I'm not even one of those people who thought the original Last of Us was a masterpiece. Y'all know my history with the with the original Last of Us. I think it's a it's a good game, but I was never on board with how most people feel about that game. So I, I'm just very critical of certain gameplay mechanics. So I I'll, I always keep it real, like the, with the parts I do like, with the parts I don't like. But overall, I'm vastly enjoying this game. Um, just go to some positive things, some added gameplay mechanics. Proning. Proning is a, a very useful mechanic. They've made it very useful. You pretty much have to use it. As much as you crouched in the original game, you might have to crouch that much in situations in this game. Uh, you can do other things now, like crafting a, a silencer to add it to your to add it to your handgun. Um, there's a dodging mechanic now. Ellie can pretty much dodge all uh, all um, enemies as far as I see. Um, all the infected I've come in contact with, I've tried to dodge them. You can dodge every single one of them, but you have to time it. You can't spam it. Um, all the, you know, the human enemies, you can dodge them also, but it's not, I wouldn't say it's overpowered because you could still, you know, if, if enemies are ganging up on you, that dodge mechanic isn't going to help you that much. If you, if you're getting like double teamed or anything like that, um, you know, there's, They've really opened up the game. So there's areas you can squeeze through in, in the smaller areas. There's rope swinging, uh, there's swimming. Um, the visuals are, are great. The animations are good. You run into a few animation bugs here and there, but overall, it, you know, the, vi the visuals of the game is great. It, it's a beautiful game. So I see some people exaggerating saying like, oh, this is, it looks like a next gen game. No, no, it doesn't. It looks like an extremely refined, opti optimal, PS4 game. That's what that's what it looks like. It definitely looks like a PS4 game, but it looks like a, a, P, a, a PS4 game where the developers have mastered the tech and mastered the hardware. 
The one other thing I do have a problem with, um, I forgot to mention. So I'm 15 hours into the game, as I've said, and I've only come across one new infected, right? And it's it's the, it's the inf it's not a spoiler because this is the infected that they've told us about in all of the gameplay trailers and everything like that. And it's the Shambler. And people who have, uh, certain people in the media have said there's a lot less infected in this game overall than the first game. And I can understand that this is more about uh, th this game is more about a human, um, this is more of a human story, um, than it is a, than it is a survival story as, as far as the, uh, as far as the infected goes. The first game was a more, a lot more about the infected. I, I get it, but I like interactions with the infected, right? And it's kind of disappointing to me that I'm 50, 15 hours into the game and I've only encountered the new inf infected shambler types. And I think one thing that really adds lore to games, in my opinion, is different infected types. That's one thing that I don't think people, I'd say this all the time. One thing I think people don't give Gears of War uh, enough credit for is how many different types of like Locust, Lambent and all that other stuff there are. And they're like really good creative types and designs of enemies. I don't think that game, that's, that franchise and that IP gets enough credit for it. So I don't know how many um, infected are I'm gonna come across by how many new infected I'm gonna come across by the time I beat the game, but I hope it's a lot more. But I feel like I've been playing a long time so far, and I haven't come across a lot of a, a lot of new uh, new type of infected. Um, so I mean, and, and Naughty Dog and you know the direction of Neil Druckmann doesn't seem like he's so focused on creating a whole bunch of of new types. He seems more. He seems like he cared more about the human story. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if, besides the Shambler, there's one, there's one more uh, infected type that we come across. I wouldn't be surprised if there's only one more, which to me would be weak. I, I think that there needs to be at least two others besides the Shambler. I would say that's at least that's at least acceptable. Three more besides the Shambler would be great for me. Two two more, I, I'll, I'll accept that. That that's just baseline acceptable. So I, I, you know, I'm just somebody who really likes, you know, seeing different infected and stuff like that. So lastly, let me touch on, uh, well, I'm gonna touch on the open um, area and the environments a little bit and the AI. So overall, the AI is much smarter than they are in the original game, but they're still kind of dumb to the, to the point where you can still like get away with certain things and exploit them. But there's certain things you absolutely can't get away with anymore at all. For example, charging directly towards an enemy looking at you, right? In the original game, you could do that all day. They might, you know, they might uh, take a little damage off you if they got like a pistol or something like that. Even if they had a shotgun, you could honestly probably, or an assault rifle, one of the more power weapons in the game, you could still run towards them, get a melee attack in and just beat them to death. Yeah, that's not flying in this game, at least not in the difficulty I'm playing on. If you charge towards an enemy, you're getting a big bullet to the head and you're dying pretty damn quick. If if you're if you're already close to them, that's a little bit different. You can get away with it. But if you're like running towards them and there's sp there's a decent amount of space between you and the enemy. Yeah, you're you're getting you're getting clapped. You will get clapped especially because their weapons now, they've added a uh, stopping power. So you're not just running through bullets. You're not just taking damage and running through bullets anymore. You're getting shot and you're getting pushed back. And there's even points if Ellie gets shot with certain weapons, she gets knocked down. And now you have to shoot from her knocked down state because taking getting up might take too long. So they've added things like that to make uh, enemies um, better. Also, like just enemies flank. They flank very aggressively now. Um, also, they look around corners like a like a smart human being. They don't just walk into a room and just walk square into a room without looking around the corner. They actually turn their whole body to look at the corner now. So you can't just wait around the corner and grab them. You really got to like kind of be patient, especially if you play like me very stealthily. You actually have to flank them and, and be patient and everything like that. So the AI is much better, but it's still it's still kind of dumb at the same time. Um, same thing with the, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, and the infected AI is, is pretty good. I think it's even more aggressive, like with the echo location, with the clickers, I think they're, they're even, I think like their echo location is even stronger than it was in the original game. Um, 
I feel like that thing is like damn near OP sometimes, but you know, it, it's not a huge problem, but like, I feel like they've made the echo location even stronger in this game. And as far as the open areas, I like them. It, it's not an open, it's obviously not an open world game or anything like that. It has like linear, uh, wide areas. Uh, where you can go and look in different uh, buildings and houses and there may be things for you to do in them and it only benefits you if you actually go and do all the all and explore these uh, these places it might be items or collectibles that you need uh, there's obstacles in the game that, in, that involve the rope swinging that I, that I mentioned um, I guess you can consider those environmental puzzles. They're not like uh, super complicated or anything like that. There's safes also, and there's also there's they put clues throughout the usually close by for you to figure out what the code to the safe is. Um, so yeah, I really like that they included like they they have like this open design akin to like what they did with Un Uncharted 4: or Lost Legacy. I like it better in The Last of Us. I actually didn't like it in Uncharted 4. I I, I would have preferred Uncharted 4 stay a little bit more linear, but it makes sense for me in my opinion with the with The Last of Us. Um, with The Last of Us Part Two because I like to explore these different um, areas. You know, you never know what could be in each one. Um, so it, it's definitely fun to explore all these these different areas. Um, and you know, that helps the combat. And, I, and also with the AI, one thing I've hated with game design for a long time is when AI sees you, suddenly everybody knows where you're at right and they lock on to you permanently that's not how is it how it is in this game you can break line of sight you can go back into hiding with the infected with with the seraphites uh the wlf you know there's dogs in the game now uh which are annoying as hell because obviously they can smell you out and everything like that so yeah they they put a lot of a lot more gameplay mechanics in the in this game because most would say that's what the main game i would say the first game was lacking the most was, was in the gameplay department so yeah i'm enjoying the game i think it's great of course i still have to beat the game to have to formulate my complete opinion on the you know the overall experience and i will let y'all know how it is when i finally beat the game uh so thank you all for watching make sure you hit the like button hit the notification bell consider becoming a member by hitting the join button and follow me on twitter all right I'll check y'all later. I'm out of here. Peace.